what ends up happening to so many people is you move into a home and then you realize, holy crap, movers are expensive. And oh my God, my wife wants a lot of things for my home or my husband wants a lot of things for my home. And these things are costly and you don't want to just start suddenly going into debt, 0% APR, buy now, pay later, trying to finance all the new equipment, all the new appliances and all the new furniture. Because let me tell you something, furniture is expensive. Have you looked at the prices of mattresses lately? They are very expensive. And so you want to make sure you're budgeting that, have the cash aside to be able to buy these things with cash within your invest first parameters. And so this is where if you're going out to buy a home, understand these different costs before you go out and actually purchase the home. And this is where everybody says, but just breathe. You talk about 75, 15, 10 as in spend, invest, save. Isn't me paying down my mortgage a type of investment? Am I not investing when I'm buying this home? No, your home that you buy to live in is a liability. Treat it like a piece of shirt. Treat it like a piece of cloth. You're buying it to use. Sure, can it make you money? Absolutely. But there's no guarantees that it's going to make you money. We've seen home prices go up. We've also seen home prices go down. And so your home becomes a money pit until you ultimately sell it. We're all told that your home is the biggest investment. Why are we told that? Because, well, when realtors are trying to sell you a home, they want you to buy a bigger home because the bigger home you buy, the bigger commission check they get. I'm telling you this because I am a licensed realtor and you know what? If we can tell you that your home is a great investment, you're going to want to buy a little bit bigger because now you can build generational wealth. But it's not their fault. They're in the interest of trying to sell you your dream home, the beautiful home that you want. Same with bankers. Well, bankers get paid on commission too. The more money you borrow, the more money they make, which is why if you really want to get that bigger home, they're going to do whatever they can to pull some strings to get the underwriters to get you approved to buy that bigger home. It's not in their best interest to make sure that you're financially sound, to make sure that you have money to invest. They just want their commission check. That doesn't make them a bad person, but you have to understand now your duty, your best interest. Your best interest is to make sure that you can buy a home that you can afford while still having the ability to invest, while still having the ability to save. And if you just follow a spend first model as to how big of a home that you can buy, you are going to lose the ability to invest just so you can own a home. And by the way, when you're paying your mortgage payments to your home, you might think that you're building equity. You might think that you're building ownership in this property that you can pass down with generational wealth. Well, if you go out and you get a 30-year fixed rate mortgage, more than half of your mortgage payment for the first 14 years is going to be going directly into your banker's pockets with interest. Meaning for the first year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, year six, year seven, year eight, year nine, year 10, year 11, year 12, year 13, and year 14, the majority of your interest payments, the majority of your payments to the bank is going directly into your banker's pocket and it's not building you equity. Now, sure, is it nice to have a paid down house? Yeah. Is it nice to not have to make any more mortgage payments? Yeah. But is it nice to do that at the sacrifice, at the detriment of your ability to actually invest into other places that can make you money? No, your home is a money pit until you sell it because now when you're living in your home, you're going to want to make upgrades. You got to pay the property taxes. You got to pay the insurance. Every time something breaks, you're going to have to fix it. And until you sell, you're not going to see a penny. And then when you sell, you have to hope that you can sell it for a profit. And then when you sell, you also lose the home. Compare that to going out and buying a rental property where now you have tenants that are paying for your expenses. Yeah, you still got to pay for your upgrades. You still got to pay for the property taxes. You still got to pay for the insurance. But the rental income from the property is paying for all your expenses and putting some money in your pocket each and every month. It's a completely different way of analyzing the deal. See, when you go out and buy a home, you don't go in thinking, oh, how much can I sell this home for in the future? Because if you are, well, you might be disappointed because you never know where home prices are going to be when it comes time for you to sell. But when you go out and you buy a rental property, you're going out and you're thinking, how much money is this property going to make me? When you buy a home, you're thinking about the memories. When you buy a rental property, you're thinking about the money. So your home that you live in, treat it like a liability. Treat it like any other expense that maybe you can sell it for a profit in the future. But the key... The major key here is that when you go out and buy a home, you are not sacrificing your ability to build true wealth, true generational wealth outside of your home just because you wanted to go out and buy a home. And if you still don't believe me, go out and talk to any wealthy person in the world and ask them how they did it. And what you'll notice is nobody, 
none of them became wealthy because they paid off of their home. They became wealthy because they were investing in real estate. They became wealthy because they were investing in stocks. They became wealthy because they were investing in businesses or they became wealthy because they built their own business. That's how people become wealthy. It's not just because they paid down their home. It's nice to have a paid down home. It's nice to own a home, but it's not nice to do that at the expense of not being able to build your own wealth. If you enjoyed this short clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love and while you're at it, if you're interested in learning more about how to start generating passive income, our team put together an amazing guide on how to start generating passive income for free. All you gotta do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling.